Oh my god, you can't be that woke. Zero Italians in the North African campaign. So they completely change his nationality. They just make him Australian, but we keep the cool tattoo. Apparently they even wanted to do a mission about Sibo Helhe. You know, the famous Swedish sniper. And let's backtrack a bit. I got a bit distracted by the thickness. They actually put the guys in the middle of the desert. They do know that Tobruk was a major port city. Hi and welcome to History Legends. In this video, we'll do a step-by-step -step historical breakdown of the Siege of Tobruk as depicted in the latest Call of Duty Vanguard. Honestly, I'm not ready for yet another Call of Duty Vanguard reaction. But after 8,000 votes, you guys voted massively for another round. You guys just want to see me suffer. But before we start, quick word from our sponsor. Thank you to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Do you like being safe on the internet? Then you should be using Atlas VPN. Once you're connected to Atlas's server, your device gets a new IP and DNS address, basically a new identity, making your data encrypted and your virtual location hidden. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three year subscription for just $1.99 a month with a 30 day money back guarantee. Time is running out. So get your deal by clicking the link in the description below. Atlas VPN was created to make the internet accessible and secure for everyone. Currently, it has more than 6 million users worldwide. You can use Atlas VPN on Windows, Apple, Android, iOS, you name it. Personally, I like using Atlas VPN so I can log in to Netflix Australia and watch all their awesome war movies not available in Canada. And worst case, if it's not for you, they offer a 30 day money back guarantee. Atlas VPN is running a huge discount in their three year deal for just $1.99 a month, but that deal is not going to last long. So make your internet safer today by clicking the link in the description. Thank you for your patience, guys. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, Tobruk, 1941, it's starting well. Maybe this mission is going to change my mind about the game. Because it was indeed a siege at Tobruk in 1941. The quality of those cutscenes are really... Wow. SOE! And there was such a thing as a special operations executive. Okay, honestly, not bad, it's starting well. Yeah, that was their job, the SOE, sabotage. Hold on, they do know that Tobruk was a major port city. That means it's near the sea. What do you mean out there in the desert? <laughs> Play the damn cards. I love the Australian accent. Also, Australians like to say good day or something like that. <laughs> and of course, you guys all heard of the joke. Raise up lights. Just this gives so much savor to this mission. <laughs> Why is a British officer in command of Australians? Remember, every army of the Commonwealth had its own officers. And why does he hate them? The British were actually pretty happy to have the support of numerous well-trained Australian troops in the critical early days of the war, like in North Africa, mainland Greece, Crete and Lebanon. Oh, Major Hams. That's interesting. Correct me if I'm wrong, but typically in the British Army, a major is in command of a company that is about 100 to 150 men, whereas a British captain would be the second in command of the company. I really hate to stop every two seconds. Oh, <laughs> what is this? Have you seen this uniform? I'm pretty sure that is the Slade Wallace equipment. You can recognize it with its famous colonial white leather harness. Are we gonna see some boars? Honestly, that would be epic. Because that was the British uniform during the Second Boars War. That took place 40 years before. Why does he hate them? What? <laughs> what did he say? You rats? Why is he calling them rats? In the game, they state that the British rudely referred to the Australians as rats. That's not how it went. That is historically inaccurate. And why would they? 
their allies. So here's the real story. At Tobruk, the Australians reused all the Italian fortifications that were dug into the ground. So it's actually the Germans that mocked the Australians by calling them desert rats since they hid underground. And then the Germans kept saying that the Australians were trapped like rats. What do you mean real soldiers? Who wrote this? At least there's humor. At least. Oh, is that a... Okay, hold on. Let's go back a bit. An Owen gun. Although I gotta admit, it's cool to see an Owen gun. It was an Australian-made SMG. This clearly takes place in the summer of 1941, while the Owen gun was only produced in 1942 and only served Australian troops fighting in the South Pacific. I don't understand. If they want to include this gun, why don't they just make a mission that takes place in New Guinea or something in 1942. But that will also make me out of work. All right, Tobruk, where's the sea? Where's the Mediterranean Sea? They actually put the guys in the middle of the desert. Hold on. So we have one British major in command of only four men. How is that supposed to make sense? They really want us to hate British officers. It's never too thick. Honestly, if they didn't pack for a tank, just don't attack to come. Let them pass. The major should know this. And let's backtrack a bit. I got a bit distracted by the thickness. Can someone tell me what is this? What a weird uniform. Oh my god, okay. It's actually an Australian World War I uniform. You heard that right. World War I. Australians wore that bluish gray back at Gallipoli. However, in North Africa, Australian troops wore the standard khaki uniform, the desert camo one, the same as British troops. Anyway, we face a situation where all their uniforms are completely out of date. I want to know the name of the guy in charge of the uniforms. <laughs> They're really pushing the stereotype of the arrogant British officer. Just like in Band of Brothers, not only arrogant but also incompetent. Really reminds me of this stereotypical British officer from Monty Python. Well, anyone got anything they'd rather be doing than marching up and down the square? It's literally the same thing. So we start at a perfect timing. Let's analyze this German column. First of all, I don't know how accurate that is that a German tank would be ahead of the column. Usually, German motorized columns would have either motorcycle or lightly armored vehicles as vanguard and not necessarily a tank for this exact reason. And talking about the tank, let's try to find out what model it is. As you know, I'm not the greatest tank expert and we don't see much. I'll give it a try. If I make a mistake, comment below. So at first glance, if we look at the gun, it seems like the one on the Panzer III model L. You can see the KWK-39, basically a Pac-38 without the muzzle brake, which was specific to this prototype, but it was never released for combat. But apart from that, it doesn't really look like a Panzer III. You see the turret is too much towards the back. That would mean we have a Panzer IV I'd say model G. Apart from the muzzle brake, the cannon and the turret seem right. Then we have these things in front. It seems like spare tank tracks, but it's there. Overall, it looks pretty similar. So I would say Panzer IV model G. In little detail, we can see the same headlight as in the game. However, in the game, they forgot to add one on the left side. And you can't even say it's because of the explosion because even before it, there's only one light. However, whether it's a Panzer IV Model G with the cannon of a Panzer III Model L, both are anachronistic for 1941. Oh, Vanguard. I don't understand why it's so hard for the game to use proper vehicles for the time period. Sadly, I feel that they copy-pasted the same German tank model in every mission. Tobruk, El Alamein, Stalingrad, it's always there. Okay, if the attack failed, now it's the time to pull back. Oh my god. 
the odds of this happening of course it could happen but would you build your entire strategy on that one trick shot we better see a 360 no scope right after i think in the normal setting the machine gun should be spraying now instead of charging the column but it's pretty good that they're throwing grenades and now we see the tank a bit better hold on now I think the iron sight on the Owen gun was actually on the right side. And I think it would make sense since most people shoot from the right side. You can see an example right here on screen. And some might say it's a little detail, but in this game it's an accumulation of small details that just ruin the experience. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> this is hilarious. Check out these pre-positioned ammo boxes. And the game wanted to make clear that it was for you to use it, so they added a British flag. Again, a couple special forces can destroy an entire convoy by themselves. That's literally every COD game nowadays. Oh! I take back what I said! They actually have reinforcements! Regular infantry! Oh, nice! Okay, there's a lot of them. I like it. Oh, did you see this? You see this hat? I think Australians call it the slouch hat. Forgive my Australian if I make a mistake, but it's confirmed they're all Australian. If we go back a bit, we can see at least one thing that's historically accurate because it's true that the bulk of Allied forces besieged at Tobruk were Australian. And I'm pretty happy to see that the reinforcements have the actual historic uniform, the bloody helmet, the desert shorts and overall the khaki uniform. But as always, there is one problem. The troops that Australians faced at Tobruk were mainly Italian. Yet in the game, there's none. Zero Italians in the North African campaign. Pretty insulting, not gonna lie. This is the perfect example of rewriting history. You just take out one of the main actors of the war from the story. All we see are Germans. The game doesn't even call them Germans, it's always Nazis. Okay. Oh, what? Wow, beautiful. A Vollsturmgewehr in 1941. I don't know how it got there because it was only produced from January to May 1945. Hold on. Hold on. Pereira? Hossein? You're kidding me, right? Oh my god, you can't be that woke! Australians with Arab and Portuguese surnames. Certainly not impossible, but highly unlikely in World War II. Why push fake diversity when you could use historical one, like Australians of German, Aboriginal, and even Chinese descent that actually fought? Like this World War I soldier, William Singh, born from an English mother and a Chinese father. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Okay, come on. Again, an anachronistic weapon, the STG-44 in 1941. The Germans wish they had access to these. <laughs> you have a German wounded, nobody cares. Now, with that being said, it's historically accurate that Australians launched raids against Italian and German positions while encircled at Tobruk. The goal of these detachments was to pierce through enemy lines at night and cause as much damage as possible. And that's one good example of it. Even if in reality, an only infantry force would never attack an armored column. So I have it here. There was an attack by Australian forces called the Twin Pimples Raid in July 1941. During this raid, commandos sneaked through enemy positions at night and destroyed a lot of mortars and ammo dumps. Australian engineers placed explosive, blew up everything, and then ran away. I wish this raid, this famous raid, could have been depicted in the game instead of this fantasy-like scenario. Oh, this typical scare thing. Useless. Why is he always mad? Quick pause. Is it me or there is something off with his beret? Look at his badge. We can clearly see a tank, but why is a British major of an armored unit in command of an SOE unit made of Australians? And then I could not find that badge anywhere. I did some digging and I found this one of the Royal Tank Regiment that looks very similar. 
We can see that both of them have a crown at the top, but the RTR has a World War I tank as an emblem, not a World War II one. Why couldn't they use the original badge? It's a shame because several RTRs did in fact fight near Tobruk in 1941. He took charge of the raid. Why isn't he mad at himself? Oh, what a bad dialogue. Oh! Is that a Maori tattoo on an Australian guy? <laughs> what is this? So I just looked it up and apparently the main character was supposed to be a super soldier from New Zealand called Charles Upham, a true badass. One of three men to be ever awarded two Victoria Crosses. New Zealand, I guess that explains the Maori tattoo. Now I'm thinking, why not make this mission about Maori troops? They love diversity, why don't you input factual diversity? And they actually fought in North Africa. This makes me mad. But the game developers were like, nah, let's just make him Australian, but we keep the cool tattoo. So they completely changed his nationality. Apparently they even wanted to do a mission about Sibo Helhe, you know, the famous Swedish sniper. And another one in the tank where you play George S. Patton, the famous Canadian general. Or even a sabotage mission from a very famous Belgian resistance fighter called Charles de Gaulle. All for creative liberty. Okay, good, take him prisoner. Oh, why? Did we just witness an execution? Oh, true, it's just a German. Can we even consider them as humans? That is the question. They literally could have taken him as prisoner for intel. At least this has funny lines. And from what I heard, this is typical Australian humor. So that's pretty good. And it's true that Australians then took with pride the insult the Germans gave them as rats. This doesn't look at all like Tobruk. I feel they just took the same map as El Alamein, put a night filter, called it a day. It should be flat desert landscape right next to the Mediterranean Sea. But what do I know? Let's just look at pictures together. On this one, foxholes in the middle of a flat desert landscape. Flat. On this one, you can see an Australian trench in a rocky desert flat landscape. And this one is important. You actually see hills. I said hills, not cliffs and canyons that you can see in the game. And if you pay attention at the back of these rocky hills, you see the Mediterranean Sea. And that's exactly what we can see on this map. Whenever you're close to an elevator terrain, that means you're close to the water. Tobruk is pretty flat except for the parts near the water. Yeah, I guess it's pretty lazy environment building. Okay, this doesn't look like a German camp either. Before I told you, Australians would sneak through enemy lines. That is barbed wire, trenches, minefields, foxholes, you name it. Not guard towers with searchlights. Ruins? Why always ruins? Because you do know that people actually lived there and they didn't live in ruins. Again, I'm getting mad for this lazy environment. I feel it's a bit cheap though that you can know exactly where the grenade is falling. So easy after that. There's exactly this thing written, explosive. <laughs> the Germans would definitely have this in their camp. Oh, an MG42. An MG42 again in 1941. I'm getting exhausted by mentioning all these. Okay, what is that? The map. <laughs> that is not even the proper map of Tobruk. And yeah, it's definitely Tobruk because it's written here, but yet we don't see the city of Tobruk, nor do we see British allied positions. You read crowd. Ein <laughs> So right now they have to sneak through German lines. More accurate, let's say. And do you notice how the Germans are always, have always their face covered? I keep repeating it, but it's another step to dehumanize the Germans. <laughs> the German officer just said, in alle Reihe bleiben. That means stay in one column. Why would he say this? What is the tactical advantage of this order? I forbid you to spread out. We have to stick to Keza. Okay, take note. If you want to avoid enemy commandos, yell out your orders to scare them away. And it's always very good to have searchlights in the middle of the desert. That way nobody sees you, you know? But honestly, I prefer this part of the mission that's more commando-like. 
Oh. Must be pretty important what they're hiding. Yes, food and ammo. They just went through any cliff and they fall straight into the German camp. I expected the main characters to crawl through barbed wire, sneak through trenches, but no, they, they fall straight into the enemy position. Oh, and how convenient, there's nobody. And they're all the maps. The entire maps of the German headquarters in the first tent of the camp. Oh, there's nobody in the camp. What is this? <laughs> oh, did you just see this? Okay, look at the German aircraft. It just started to take off. And it takes 10 meters to fly off. <laughs> 10 meters. Even today, pilots wish they could do that. But there's one historical thing, plant a satchel charge in the ammo dump. That was their actual mission. So that's what's sad about this game. They, they always follow some historical thread, but then they have to mess it up with a pile of crap. And I remember these animations of enemy soldiers just walking around cluelessly, like 20 years ago. I wish that with modern skills and techniques, we could have something better. Apparently not. Oh, to yourself. Now that's true that the Germans would often put, often, let's be honest. Sometimes they would put flags for their aircraft to spot them from the sky and not target them thinking they're an enemy column. Oh, the Stuka came back. <laughs> Hold on, you kidding me? They don't expect us to destroy this aircraft with a submachine gun. At least back in the days, they gave us a heavy machine gun to take it down. Now they're just like, screw that. Here's your rifle, take down an aircraft. Oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. I don't even want to finish. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Let me know what you think of my analysis in the comment section below. If you're new to this channel, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want to help me create more content, don't forget to support me on Patreon, link in the description.